Can you do it? Energy. We gotta have high energy. Let's do it. Let's pump up. I got my Lola shirt. <sighs> How can you not have Hi, I'm Evan. I'm Teddy, and this is our van, Plum. Today, we're gonna talk about how we got here. To living in a van, sitting in a driveway, in our, Winnipeg, our driveway. <laughs> in the middle of winter. <laughs> My hair okay? You know, it doesn't matter. I haven't had a haircut in like two months. I know. So, so we are uh, wedding photographers and videographers based here in Winnipeg, the middle of Canada. Getting into this van has been a journey. <laughs> Evan has wanted to live in a van and do van life for like, I don't know, maybe five or six years. Yeah. We bought the van two years ago. Three. Three. And we're finally moved in. The plan was for us to head out west where the weather is much warmer and much easier to exist in when you're living inside of a vehicle. But something happened that kept us from leaving. Yes. My dad moved to the Dominican like well over a year ago and his health wasn't doing very well in the last couple of months so we brought him home. On December 5th, he flew home and he needed a place to quarantine and live while he was here. We let him move into our house and he's been living there for the past month and a little bit. Our plan was to move into the van right away. However, it wasn't quite ready. Yeah, when her dad arrived, we moved into my parents' basement. Me and my dad worked in the van every single day to get it into a position that we could comfortably be inside here and survive Winnipeg in the winter. We really wanted to be in the van by Christmas. Christmas Eve was really like the like end zone of when we needed to be in the van. So that gave us like 20 days. It gave yeah, us 20 days. We moved there in the 20 fifth. days to get just a shit ton of stuff done on the van. Well, 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 well. It's been a while since I've turned this on in relation to the van build. A lot has changed, so. Let's go check out where we're at. Here we are. Huzzah, the van. It's a bit of a mess right now, but let's, oops. Let's see where we're at with things. When we first started planning the van, we did not have a dog until we got her. And then we had to start making concessions and finding a way to how that we would make Lola comfortable. We had a problem where we kept on tripping on her water bowls and food bowls. I thought it was a good idea to down here, make a little drawer where we can move her stuff in and out, which is good too, because it'll protect the water from spilling all over the place if something happens, if we stop quickly or whatever. So Evan got started on that project. It was a lot of work because he had to move a ton of stuff. Well, I did a, did a bit of work here. So, you know, there's a floor that goes over here. And then I moved everything here so we can fit this in. So that her water bowls. This inside box wasn't totally necessary, but if there's water in here, there's an accidental spill because there's so much electrical going on down here. I wanted to minim minimize liability, so we built this inside box. The project that they wanted to get going on first was the ceiling. We had like tongue and grit. Actually, why am I excited? <laughs> <this? laughs> when we were picking the materials to build like the walls and the ceiling with, for the ceiling, we went with three quarter inch pine tongue and groove boards. We went with those because that was the only material that we could find in 14 foot spans, but did not like the look of tongue and groove. We did have a uh, interior designer work with us in a lot of the decisions throughout the process. Hi Brie, you've been incredible. And, and, and she agreed that a shiplap finish would look a lot better. So I thought, heck, how easy would it be? Heck! Heck! <laughs> How easy would it be to just like rip some quarter inch pine into shiplap? Easy. It wasn't easy. It was uh, pretty time consuming, uh, ripping the big four by eight sheets of pine. And then we had to prime it and then paint it. And then we had to cut the right lengths, uh, the right size, make sure that the grooves were like all similar, which that was a journey. When we finally did get it all up, painting it was, 
you know, I left that to my dad. I can paint. I don't think I'm the best painter. During this, during the first few days of building, the weather was fantastic. It's so cold here most of the winter, and so it's been miraculously warm and miraculously low amounts of snow as well. Well, we're coming at another day of uh, building outside. It's quite a different story than the last few weeks. Finally, it's starting to feel like Christmas in December. Oh shoot, this thing is so slippery. Now the van's winter abilities are really gonna be put to the test. And then the next thing we moved on to completing was the backsplash, which was like a big step in making this place finally feel like it was a living space and not some construction site. This was a bit of a headache to do as well because we couldn't find the right spacers uh, for the backsplash that we had. So we ended up using a lot of nickels that my dad's been collecting, which were the perfect size. It's pretty funny, like this is a pretty regular backsplash from Home Depot. So yeah. I was surprised that the spacers that you can buy from those places don't actually fit this particular backsplash. And so, you know, Harold's very creative. And so he just whipped out his nickel collection, which I guess he had and used that instead. And then Evan did the grout himself. I have never done this before, so I hope it goes well. Also, I, uh, I shaved yesterday, back to the mustache, and now, because it's so cold out, I wear this stupid hat. Uh, Harold is quite a perfectionist, just like Evan, but in different ways, and so I'm actually surprised that he, you know, gave up that... I think he knew that that was pretty low stakes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> After we had the backsplash in, my dad started working on framing out the window by our feet in the bed. He had an idea, it was supposed to be simple. Bit of a big operation here to, to accomplish a mildly small task. This window comes with a roller cover, mosquito net thing, but we need to add trim. And when we installed it, it's a little too tight, so we got to go to all this effort so dad can take off trim material. It was messy, took a lot of preparation. While he was focused on doing that, I took it upon myself to finish the toe kick underneath. So right now, it's a shame I can't get my hair cut. Uh, right now I am mapping out the toe kick for the kitchen. Like everything else in the van, there's a lot more than just thrown on one big piece, so I wanna make the most of the space down there. Took a bit of planning as well, because there's more going on down there than just a toe kick. We have some secrets. Good job. Thank you. As my dad was finishing the framing around the window in the bed, I was a little like wondering what I should do, so I thought, heck, heck, heck. <laughs> I was looking for something to do, so I thought I try would try filling the water tanks again, because they'd been mostly empty for this whole time. And that didn't go very well. Being winter and having all of the outdoor threads frozen, it's a little more complicated. I do have a solution for it, but it's gonna take time. And instead of trialing all of that on the day we move in, I thought I'd just trial it now. So let's fill up the tanks with water. I installed this handy, 12 volt outside connection. There's a switch that I just, boom, it's on. Then I just make sure, I just make sure that everything is prepared. So this is going to the tank. This is on. Oh. The fill hole has a check valve in it, which I thought it was a good idea to get a hole with the check valve to decrease mess, which is fine in summertime, but when it gets below zero, even though I have a heater on the line, the check valve itself in the fill, that's what's frozen. So as soon as the water hits it, the check valve is frozen frozen shut. I could have taken a heat gun out and, and warmed up the check valve, but I knew with that problem, I would be kind of facing an uphill battle every time we filled the tanks. So I had to come up with a different solution. <laughs> we'll, or we'll order our uh, TH tanks after oh, nice. It just meant drilling a really big hole in our brand new shower. The obvious candidate for a place to put a fill port is in the shower. The problem with putting a fill port in the shower is we're already dealing with limited space. I got a lot going on in here. But there is room down there. 
But you did it. <laughs> did a big old hole. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the necessity drives innovation or something like that? I don't know. I don't read or. <laughs> <laughs> and now now we have like a perfect winter solution. Oh, I still have that in my hair. It is 9.30 on Friday, here. This is the uh, fill, uh, fill port for water tanks. This way I'm able to fill up the water tanks uh, in the warmth of the van instead of outside in the cold. We can fill our tanks inside of a house or even like if we go to a Safeway, a lot of those, a lot of grocery stores have fresh water. But then we can carry our fresh water into the van, in the shower, pump it from our portable tanks into our back tanks. And then we have lots of water for a while. Moving on. By the time I finished creating this new fill in the shower, my dad was done with the bedroom window framing and then he moved on to another very complicated part. I call it curvy wood. Curvy <laughs> the curvy wood. bits. Curvy wood. It's easy, right? It's easy. Well, that, and that broke, so I... So that's the... See if it holds. So, you know, it's a van. There's lots of, like, not square areas um, that typically in a house you would like square off or in other vans other people have just squared it off they've just make, made like a corner. Harold really wanted to make it look beautiful and he did. He literally spent forever like bending wood, getting it wet, um, slicing like slits in the back to make it like bend and move. Unfortunately it's one of those things that's not going to get appreciated the full appreciation that it deserves because when something looks good and fits in it doesn't stick out and doesn't get noticed. While he was working on that, uh, we did install a bed lift. There's a bit of dead space that I wanted to be able to access. The bed lift works. Frame definitely sags, but it's not terrible. It needs to be modified a little bit. Like I need to add some tension support because the mattress we have, which is a great mattress, really comfortable. We yeah. love it. It's very heavy. It's so and with that weight on the frame and using the bed lift, it kind of shifts things around and lifting the bed up and down can actually cause scratching on the wall, which wasn't an issue before I put the mattress in. So it was around this time, uh, I was thinking it was gonna get cold, it wasn't getting cold, wasn't getting cold. And then all at once, it got really cold. Yeah, like minus 30. Ooh, and she's frozen. Look at all this. Seventeen degrees in here. The van is in a very large space to keep warm, but it does take up a lot of energy to keep it warm when it's cold, like minus 30. And we were a little bit worried about moving all of our stuff in and keeping the doors open constantly as we were just loading more and more stuff. That beeping is a temperature sensor warning me that little section of the van that is below freezing which is mildly concerning. Honestly, at this point, we just have to move in and find out. And today's moving in day. I hope everything holds up. I hope we stay warm enough. By the time we were actually ready to like move our stuff in, it was like after dark, it was like after dinner. I almost was like, no. But Evan convinced me and we got started. I was set on getting, a st I was set on sleeping in the van on December 23rd. I was not gonna let anything get in my way. So. And it did not. <laughs> Loading all of our stuff from the basement up into the upstairs area of uh, Evan's parents' house, it was very evident that we had a lot of stuff and I was really nervous that it wasn't going to fit. Everything did fit. There are a few things that are like totally random that we had accumulated over the last couple of weeks that didn't fit, obviously, but luckily we still have access to our house. Where are we at? Well, these need to go inside. We have, uh, this is still not optimally used. Nope, this is still pretty much unused. Like we got all moved in and all organized. Probably around like 11 was the time we were like, oh wow, we're done, finally. God. Are you making any progress? Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. Cheese beach. We moved in. Our first night 
we had very different experiences. I slept very well. Um, it was a little chilly. My my bed bedside is really close to the door, and it took a while for that side of the bed to warm up from my body heat. But after that happened, like I was totally fine, and I woke up very warm. Yeah. First night in the van, I didn't sleep terribly well. Honestly, it's it's mostly because like so much of the like little build things were just running through my head. I was wondering, did I have this? Did I do this? Is this gonna cut power? Blah, 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 blah. Is this gonna freeze? So it took a while for my mind to settle. There were so many things that I was thinking about that Teddy just didn't have to think about because I was thinking about it. Fuck my drag, right? And it, it was hard to sleep through it. But at that point, we had kind of reached the point where it's like, okay, we're living, we're living in our van now. But the big moment though was starting the van driving away and moving on with our life living in a van. Nothing. This lights up. So we have a slight, nah, it's a big problem. The van won't start. There was a long period of time there where they were scraping and jumping. There was jumping. ice everywhere. Teddy's, the, the, the passenger door was like, there was so much ice buildup that we couldn't even open up the door. So I had to take out the heat gun and like, melt ice off of the van. I thought I had built emergency systems in place so that like if a van battery does run dead, I could revive it using the leisure batteries. I did, in theory, set up a system uh, for moments like these. So now I'm gonna have to test that system out. So if I turn this on, I turned, uh, turned that on. Nothing really happens except that now when I check the scan gauge here, it's showing 11.3 volts. That wasn't working, so that wasn't fun. I don't know, it felt kind of poetic that that was like the first started leaving. Red is... Baby. That's that's encouraging. It took so long just to get out of the driveway. Yeah. I feel like it's been forever since I've driven this thing and it almost feels wrong to be moving it. But it it felt it felt good it felt good to move in finally. It's nice to be here. Definitely. Our first week in the van, we're gonna be recapping that. We filmed a lot of it. Um, it there were a lot of um, learning experiences with that as well. And um, yeah. Lola. Oh, hi. oh hello. Oh. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. All right. All right. Well, bye. Bye for now. Bye.